and my heart and keys to all of you. Alright, so we are ready. The problem has been fixed. How are you today? Good. Are you having a good day? Yes. Who came to the shopping show this morning? Yes, I can recognize some faces. Very well, very well. Well, thank you for joining us for the Diamond and Exotic Gemstone Seminar. I have to tell you, it's certainly one of my favorite events because I get a chance to share my passion and a bit of my knowledge about the world of So my name is Daniel. I'm your marketing associate on board. What does that mean? Well, together with Eon, our shopping concierge, who did the, week, the, the show this morning, we are your shopping advisors. We are here to help you have the best possible experience when shopping on board, especially when shopping for jewelry. So today, during the seminar, I'm going to try to give you a few tips on how to buy the best diamond for you or gemstones and how to pick the uh, jewelry style that suits your expectations. All right? So, before we actually start going into the marvelous world of diamond and gemstones, I would like to ask you a question. Why people shop on a cruise? What would be the reason? No tax. No tax, definitely. That's definitely valid. Anything else? Nice stuff. Nice stuff, very nice. <laughs> I take this one, yeah. So definitely, tax and duty free would be the first reason. Just by this, you are able to save quite a lot of money, right? Now, the second is volume pricing. It sounds a bit funny, right? What does it mean, really, volume pricing? Well, let's, uh, let's compare buying on land and buying on a cruise ship. So let's imagine on land, a jewelry store will receive maybe how many? 20, 30 customers a day, approximately? From those 30 customers, how many will actually buy a piece of jewelry? 10%. More or less, right? So maybe 5, 10, even 10 if you're very lucky, right? And it's not going to be every day. Now, let's analyze what happened on a cruise ship. So all cruise ships together carry over 30 million guests a year, 30 million. So that's roughly over 80,000 guests per day. It's a lot, right? So if only 5% of those guests make a jewelry purchase, that's 4,000 pieces of jewelry sold every day. And this is the reason why Princess Cruises choose Effie, the largest jewelry manufacturer in the United States. Effie buys hundreds of thousands of gemstones every year. And of course, with such a strong buying power, they can get those gemstones for the lowest price. And those savings are going to be directly reflected in the retail price that you see on every single piece on board. So this is basically what volume prices is. Now, now to we understand a bit more why people love to shop on a cruise, what do you think people buy most on a cruise? In diamonds in general, yeah? Diamond would be the item that most people would get on a cruise. Well, diamond not only is they gorgeous, they're stunning, they are timeless. They actually endure the test of time. They connect one generation to the next. So, let's see how we can actually shop smart for a diamond. Have you heard about the forces? Yeah. yeah. What are they? What do they mean? Color? Color. Clarity? Okay. Cut? Yeah. And character. Okay. So, those forces determine the overall beauty of a diamond, its rarity, and its value, obviously, and the beauty. So, let me ask you, which of those four C's do you believe is the most important? The cut. 
the cut. Color. 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 Clarity. Clarity. I'm going to be the everything. All right. So I would definitely say that the cut is the most important. And why would I say that? Because the cut is what creates the sparkle, right? And actually, if a diamond is very well cut, it can actually appear up to 30% bigger than if the cut is not well done properly. So the cut is definitely the number one that you would be looking at. Now, you don't need to be an expert in jewelry to judge the cut. Just use your eyes. The diamond that sparkles the most is most likely to have the best cut. As simple as that. Now, let's see how it works. Let's go a bit more technical. So, we've got three little pictures here. So, this would be the ideal cut. So, you see that everything is very symmetrical, right? All the facets are cut in a proper angle, so they can reflect the light to its maximum. And you see, all the sparkle shoots out the top of the diamond. So, you're going to have a, an extremely brilliant, sparkly diamond, and you're going to have also the maximum appearance of size. Now, if you go toward the shadow cut, so at the first uh, first side, you may see well the top, which is called the table of the diamond, is a bit wider. So it may appear bigger, but in fact, no, because you see, the light goes through the diamond, and a lot of it gets lost below the girdle, on the bottom of the diamond, bottom of the diamond, sorry. So all the top is missing the sparkle. So we don't want this at all, right? We want the diamond to sparkle as much as possible. And in the deep cut, we have a, a similar phenomenon. The light goes through and then gets lost on the side of the diamond. So you do have some sparkle on the top, but the side we're missing all those sparkle. So one more time, your best <coughs> judgment to see the, the sparkle of a diamond is your eye. The one that sparkles the most will be the most likely to have a perfect cut. Does it make sense? Yeah? All right, now, second would be the color. So the color is gravy from D, which would be colorless, to Z. So the closer you go to Z, the more yellowish you will see in your diamond. Now, color, I would say it's a matter of taste, right? Some skin complexion may look better with a little bit of warmth in the diamond, while other skin complexion may look better with a whiter diamond. It's not one is good, one is bad. They're just different. Now, of course, if you go to the D, it's going to be much more expensive because it's extremely rare. So the rarity and the scarcity of it will make the value go higher. Now, you have to think also how you're going to wear your diamond. I explain myself. If you wear your diamond, solitaire for example, with a yellow gold setting, then maybe you can have a diamond color going toward the L or eventually M color. Because with the contrast of the yellow setting is still going to appear very white and you can save quite a bit of money doing that. However, if you prefer a bright white gold or platinum, maybe you want to go a little bit higher just to make sure you don't see any yellowish at all in your diamond. Again, at the end of the day, the diamond that you love would be your best choice. That would be the rule number one. The fifth C would be the craftsmanship. The craftsmanship is something very important as well. Now, unless you are collecting loose stones, when you actually uh, purchase a piece of jewelry, you fall in love with the old piece, with the design, with the setting, with the stone, right? So the old craftsmanship will enhance all the features of your stones and sometimes may help these guys some minor imperfection. And this is why houses like Cartier, uh, Tiffany, Afi of course, are worldwide recognized for their design. When you look at a piece of Afi, you will be very uh, delighted to see that every single detail is taken very seriously. Everything is beautifully finished. Now, who in that room own yellow diamonds? Anyone? Not yet. It may happen this cruise, who knows? Well, did you know that yellow diamond, to find one carat of yellow diamond, it actually 
10,000 times more rare than one carat of white diamond. That's how rare is the yellow diamond. And why does it get its yellow color? Well, again, thanks to Mother Nature. During the process of formation of the diamond, at some point, some nitrogen gets into the structure of the diamond and changes its color to a beautiful yellow color. We have a lot of guests who actually uh, choose yellow diamond to get a gift for something very unique, like an achievement in their life, or a celebration, an anniversary. And of course, this is a perfect, perfect gift to give to somebody you love and to give to yourself. Now, in the AFI shop, we do have a very uh, big collection of, of yellow diamond. If you haven't get a chance to see yellow diamond before, I definitely invite you to have a look, to try it on. Every piece of jewelry that you look at, I always invite you to try it on, because when you wear it, it definitely reveals its beauty. Now, Tanzanite. Where Tanzanite come from? Tanzania, right? But it was discovered in 1967. It is mined in Tanzania. And it's actually the only place in the world where you can mine Tanzanite. So we still have Tanzanite, however, it's getting uh, more difficult to find good quality ones and bigger stones. And what would be the four C's of Tanzanite? What would be the first C? Color. Color. The second C? Color. The third one? Color. And the fourth one, what would that be? Color. Color again, right? Color. It's all about the color. You know, Tanzanite is called a trichotic gemstone because you can see three different colors in the stone. You can see some deep blues, some vibrant violet, and sometimes you can see some flashes of fuchsia or raspberry according to the light. So after this event, when we go uh, inside the AFI shop, you're going to see uh, a collection of Nala Tanzanite. So what Nala means? Nala is the name of the brand that we carry on board. Nala means queen or strong woman in Swahili. Swahili is a language of the tribe that discovered the Tanganite back in 1967. Again, the color will be the main focus when you choose your Tanganite. The deeper blues, the deeper violet will be the more valuable. Don't get me wrong, if you see a beautiful Tanganite, like a lighter violet, lighter light like shade, with a beautiful shimmer, beautiful glow, it's still a beautiful stone. However, because it's more difficult to find a deep color of blue, again, it's going to be a bit more valuable to get a deeper color. Now, down the night, we go into one a different blue stone, sapphire. Who wants a sapphire, somebody? No? Just diamonds? You don't have that sapphire. Yeah, blue sapphire? Okay, right. So blue sapphire is definitely, are definitely the most known of the sapphire. They are known to be uh, the gemstone of royalty. I sure we all remember Lady Diana and a beautiful, huge uh, engagement ring that now uh, is owned by Kate, right? That's correct? So sapphire are the birth stone of uh, September and the 45th wedding anniversary. Now, there may be one thing that some people don't know is that sapphire come in every single color of the rainbow. Did you know that? Yes, you did. So every color of the rainbow, apart from red, can be a sapphire. And Mr. Effie has a nickname, King of Color. He actually earned that name thanks to that watercolor collection. So watercolor is a collection made of multicolor sapphire, different shades, different shapes, different size. It's a beautiful collection. What I love about it is like it's so easy to wear with anything. It matches any other pieces of jewelry you may have, any outfit you may wear with. It's also one of the most sold collection in most of the ship, the water color collection. Everybody is often referred to as the queen of gemstone because it's the oldest gemstone that was discovered. 500 BCs, 
that far in the time, it was already mined in uh, Egypt. One something, something very specific about emerald, what makes them so unique, is actually their inclusion, called jardin. Jardin is the French word for garden. So when you look at an emerald, you can really see a, a, a fingerprint inside the emerald, and that makes every single stone absolutely unique. Now, if you were to see an emerald with no inclusion at all, there will be only two options. The first one, it's fake, right? The second one, then you would be looking at an extremely rare emerald because most emeralds do have some inclusion. So not seeing any inclusion at all would be absolutely rare, extremely rare. Now we're gonna go to a different gemstone. This gemstone called Alexandrite, actually the GIA, the Gemological Institute of America, had to invent a new classification just for that stone. We all know about semi-precious, precious stone. They had to add this classification, phenomenal gemstones. Some of you know Alexandrite, some of you have seen Alexandrite. Anyone? No? Yeah, you have? Do you, do you own one? You own one, Alexandrite. So you have one in a million. They say one in a hundred thousand will get a chance to see Alexandrite. One in a million will own Alexandrite. So you definitely made a very, very good buy, and I congratulate you for that. Of changing, changing its color from a mossy green to a rich cabernet red, according to the light. So when you look at your Alexandrite by daylight, what color it is? Greenish, right? And at night, with a warm reflection, a warm light, like a candle light, it becomes a beautiful, vibrant red. It's something extremely unique. Now, not only Alexandrite are very rare, but they come also in much smaller stone. Now, nowadays they are mined exclusively in Brazil and 80% of the mine, of the, 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 the rough stone that come out of the mine are less than a quarter of a carat. So it means after being cut and polished, it's around like 90 point, 18 point. So saying that, having like half a carat of uh, Alexandrite would be considered really like a very, very big stone. And on board we carry a brand named Mark Henry. Mark Henry is a company that started uh, exploiting the mine in Brazil. They've been in business now for over 30 years. And they really have the top quality of Alexandrite. Again, how do you judge the quality of Alexandrite? Is how bright would be the two color, the green and the red, and how quick and drastically would be the change between those two colors. It's a very, very exceptional gemstone. A lot of ships don't carry Alexandrite. we very lucky on board the Scare Princess to actually have a, a, a big collection of Alexandrite. And I definitely, definitely invite you to, uh, to have a, a look at it. And that would be it for me today. Thank you for joining me. Just after this event, we're all gonna be going inside the AV store. We're going to be unveiling our Nala Tanzanite collection and we're also going to be having a raffle and we're going to be raffling a ruby pendant. That's going to be just in a couple of minutes. Who wants a ruby pendant? Oh, that's a lot of people, right? Don't fight. <laughs> So that's gonna be it for today. Now, also one more thing I want to uh, emphasize. On the 26th, we have a VIP event. On the 26th of October, at 11 a.m., we're gonna have a VIP event. So VIP event, what it means? All our buyers, collectors, people interested in jewelry are invited in our AFI store just to relax, to chit chat, to see some jewelry if you want to, to talk about anything you want. We're gonna have champagne, we're gonna have a good time. And 
the same day on the afternoon, we're going to have a jewelry auction. Have you ever been to a jewelry auction before? Then that's your perfect opportunity to do that. Eon is going to be hosting the jewelry auction. That's going to be on the 26th, if I'm not mistaken, at 4 p.m. <laughs> Are you mistaken? <laughs> we we'll confirm the time at that time, okay? So that's it for today. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to be hopefully sharing a few tips with you. Do you want to say something here? So I'll pass the mic to you. And we'll see you just after that inside the episode. Thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure. Thank you.